Pibus University, where learning is a lifelong adventure. The Pibus Public Market is pleased to offer a series of unique and fun classes for the Wenatchee Valley community. Classes are taught by local volunteers with an interest and aptitude in the subjects that they teach. My name is Willow Merritt and I am the owner and chocolatier and basically everything associated with Yeti Chocolates. Um, for those that don't know who Yeti Chocolates is, that's me and uh, my chocolate business I started um, officially in January here in the valley. I have a commercial space out in Rock Island um, that I make all of my chocolates out of and uh, just slowly getting myself established within the valley. So um, Katya uh, approached me and asked if I'd be interested in teaching a class and I said sure and obviously it was really popular because it filled up real fast. So. Congratulations for being able to make it tonight. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do tonight is I'm going to um, show you guys how to make a basic ganache, which um, before I get started with that, um, I do have a couple helpers that will help me tonight, uh, Romero and Amy. Uh, they're friends of mine and they're huge helps with, uh, with this whole process. So they'll be assisting me later um, when we get more hands on. So. Basically, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a basic ganache, and then um, I'm gonna show you how to hand dip, and then that's what you guys are gonna to get to do later. So, um, so the first thing is, is, does anybody know what a ganache is? Yes. Yeah, so it's, a, it's the chocolate, it's the filling of a, like a chocolate truffle. Um, and so basically that's kind of the basic idea of it, but there's different, like it's a, essentially a ratio of chocolate and a, um, either cream, there's three types. So um, there's cream, there's butter, and there's water, which water can also be um, fruit, purees, juices, wine. Um, so it's basically a mixture of a water-based or um, and then a fat um, because you basically cr create an emulsion. Um, does anybody know what an emulsion is? Yeah, so it's like a salad dressing. So you know, oil and uh, vinegar, um, when you mix those together, um, it basically creates an emulsion. So it's taking two unmixable things and mixing them together to make a homogenous mixture. So that's basically what a ganache is. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna show you guys is uh, basically how to make a ganache. So there's different ratios for different um, types of chocolate. So with dark chocolate, um, which is what I'm gonna show you guys how to do tonight, um, it's basically a two to one ratio of chocolate to cream. So it would be, eight ounces of chocolate to four ounces of cream. And then if you were to do milk or white chocolate, you would do two and a half to one. So it would be like 10 ounces of milk or white chocolate to two ounces of cream. Um, and um, one other um, thing, if you do want to make your own truffles later, you don't want to use chocolate chips you want to use actual like a baking bar. And I was going to bring one with me and I forgot, but you want to use like Ghirardelli or Guitard, a, bake, a baker's or baker's, you know, that you can get at the store. You want to use a bar, not the unsweetened, but <laughs> a bittersweet, semi-sweet milk chocolate um, because chocolate chips have waxes in them. It basically makes it so when you bake the chocolate chips, they stay in, basically in their shape. Um, and, that, and that just doesn't make a very good ganache. So, um, so basically, I, I brought this to show you guys. Um, so this is what you would take eight ounces of chocolate with your four ounces of cream. Um, but I'm actually going to, to make it a little easier, I'm gonna use this chocolate and I'm gonna scale it. Because um, I scale everything when I make chocolate. So um, just do, uh, I already have this scaled out to four ounces, so I'll just dump this in here. But. So basically, you put your cream in to a pan. And are you using heavy cream? Yes, heavy cream. Good question. And do you have a particular brand of chocolate you prefer? 
So I use Guitard chocolate. Um, it is, that is my main source of chocolate. I do use some different ones, like I use Cocoa Berry and Valrona, but they are fairly expensive. Um, so Guitard is a good mid-range chocolate. Um, it's, you know, it's definitely above Hershey's, but not, <laughs> it's not Valrona. <laughs> Okay, so scaled out my eight ounces of chocolate. They'll go in that bowl. And then I'm gonna switch things up here. Oh, perfect. Um, for, you know, you can actually get guitar chocolates at the food service warehouse, um, the cash and carry. Um, oh. Yep. They do carry it there, um, but Ghirardelli is a, a definitely a good option as well. Yes, and they're at Fred Meyer. <laughs> okay, so um, essentially when you make a ganache, I just take my cream and I just scald it. So it basically when it starts to boil around the outside, that's as far as I take it and then I add it to my chocolate. So I'm just gonna do that right now, but I just wanted to tell you guys before I got going. Any other questions while, while this, yes? Um, I do, yes. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, uh, I will. So other questions, um, yes, I do use, um, I heat my, I melt it. Um, you can do that in different ways. You can do it over a double boiler. Um, you can do it in the microwave, which actually that has become my preferred way to melt chocolate, but there is a specific way that you have to do it because it will burn very easily. Um, so you basically, you wanna chop it up if you do it in the microwave till it's fairly small pieces. Um, and hold that thought. Um, we're starting to scald, so I'm gonna take it off the heat and then I'm gonna add it to the chocolate. And then I'm just gonna give it a little quick mix just to, um, I'm not gonna mix it completely right now. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a mix just to pull, because sometimes the, depending on what kind of um, bowl you're using, the chocolate will start to get hard. So I just try to get the chocolate off the bottom of the bowl so it doesn't solidify. Because you actually wanna let it cool to about 100 degrees before, um, which you can just fill that with your hand. Um, if it starts to feel like it's almost your body temp, that's when you wanna start mixing it. Um, because you don't wanna mix it too hot because you risk breaking a ganache, which um, what I mean by that is when you're creating the emulsion, um, if you break it, it's basically the fat will start to seep out of the chocolate um, and it'll look really grainy. Um, you don't wanna do that. So there's like a sweet spot. You won't wanna do it too hot and you don't wanna do it too cold. Um, but to get back to the um, heating in the microwave, it's a really easy way to do it. So basically you chop it into small bits and then you put it in the microwave in obviously a heat safe bowl. Um, and I start at 45 and obviously this varies depending on how powerful your microwave is. But um, I start with 45 seconds and then I stir it and then I go to 40 seconds and then I stir it again and then I do 30. And uh, yep, um, and so then I just do 30 until it's melted. Um, pretty easy. Uh, the one thing um, I used to do um, ban marie's for a really long time. The thing that you risk is if your um, water starts to get too uh, boily, it'll flip. You know, get water into your chocolate, and that's bad. So. Um, now that I, I didn't have a microwave for a really long time, so I couldn't use microwave. I used to use double boiler for a really long time, but now I do, so it's, it's awesome.
Pibus University, where learning is a lifelong adventure. Please join us weekly for the 12th District with yours truly, Carrie Condotta. Check your channel guide for times or go to ncwlife.com for details. Pibus University, where learning is a lifelong adventure. Um, and then some other questions were, what kind of chocolate um, do I use, which I use Guitard. Um, and then, what were, there was another question. Oh yeah, um, what kind of cream? I use heavy cream for, yes. Could you spell that chocolate? Yes, so it's G-U-I-T-T-A-R-D. Okay, so it's about ready to rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. If you can't, that's yeah, fine. so I'll just walk this around. So this is kind of what it looks like um, before it gets mixed. And I'll just start to mix it a little bit so you can kind of see what will happen is it will start to get little streaks in it. That might take a few minutes. So I'll just start to. You're using the dark chocolate. I am using the dark chocolate, yes. So. Um, so the, yeah, you just basically um, try to do it in little circles with just a spatula. Yeah, yeah. So and you can see it's starting to mix together. And so you'll see you get these like dark streaks and that's kind of what you're looking for. So, um, so yeah, so then it basically, once it comes together, it just looks like a, I'll bring it around one more time. It just looks real smooth and creamy. Yeah. Oh, nice. Is that the, kind of the stage where people yeah, pour it over cakes? Just kinda... um, uh, if it's not, if it's separating, can you bring it back together? Yes and no. Um, the, the tricks that I have been told, and I have used them, and they have worked sometimes and have not sometimes. Um, a lot of the times uh, it'll break when it's too cold. So if you heat it back up um, and then rework it, it'll come back together. Um, another reason why it potentially breaks, if it's still warm and it starts to break, it's because there's too much fat. So you need to add a little liquid to it to try and bring it back. So the question was, when you're adding more liquid, um, are you adding cream or water? And cream, you'd add just a little bit more cream. Um, um, you would, uh, the question was, would it be scalded cream? Um, you don't necessarily have to scald it, but you definitely want it warm because if you had cold cream, it will seize. So. Okay, so basically what I do with this now is I put it on the sheet pan and I let it set up overnight. Um, so I'll just throw that on there. Uh, the question is, is there plastic on my sheet pan? And the answer is yes, I do. <laughs> I, I pre-plastic wrapped my sheet pan. Um, yeah, so I wrap it in plastic wrap and then I just let it sit at room temperature overnight and it'll firm up. And then I scale it the next day um, and then roll it into balls. And I use a scale and I measure it seven grams per truffle. So the question was, do I cover it in plastic when I let it rest overnight? And the answer is yes, I do. Um, cover it with plastic and then I throw it on a rack and just let it sit at room temp overnight. Um, so what is this container? This is a melter. So it's basically um, like an incubator. It keeps the um, I can, it has a dial where I can set the temperature. And so right now, um, 
It is from Belgium, so it is in Celsius, and so it's currently at 45 degrees Celsius, which is roughly 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and so I use this to temper chocolate, which um, for those of you that aren't aware with what we use in the industry, we call it couverture chocolate, which is coating chocolate in French. And it is, um, you basically have to heat and lower the uh, chocolate to um, basically get it to its working consistency. Um, and there's different methods you can do that, and that's definitely something for another time. But um, basically, you want to get it in temper so it has the nice snap and the nice shine and the nice mouth feel in your, you know, when you bite into it. Like who's had a chocolate bar that they left in their car during the summer? Raise a hand. Yeah. Um, so the when it when you open it up after it's cooled off, it has that uh, white. Um, so that's basically the cocoa butter has, it's gone out of temper and the cocoa butter's pulled to the surface. We, in the industry, call that fat bloom. So that's basically what has happened. You can still eat it, it just isn't as nice in your mouth. So now I'm going to show you guys two different methods for, yes? Is humidity or humidity The question was, will humidity cause an issue? And yes, um, so chocolate is hygroscopic. Um, so it basically, what that means is it draws water. So if you leave your chocolate in the fridge unwrapped, it will get little beads of moisture um, because it's basically the sugar in the chocolate that's drawing the moisture. Um, that's why um, if I recommend you refrigerating your chocolate, you want to have it in an airtight container. So it r reduces the risk of that happening. So. Um, we obviously don't have to worry about that as much here um, in the valley, but I do have friends in the industry that work in like south, um, and it is an issue. It will affect um, temperature. That is my biggest issue in the summer. It being too hot um, can affect, um, just the air temperature in the room can have a definite effect, and so can humidity. It can um, throw your temper out of whack, um, and it can, you know, obviously, draw moisture, so it is definitely a factor for sure. Pibus University, where learning is a lifelong adventure. Stay up to date with what's happening in North Central Washington. Go to the NCW Life community calendar at ncwlife.com. Pibus University, where learning is a lifelong adventure. So I'm gonna show you guys how to hand dip two different types. Um, so the first one I'm gonna show you is just classic truffle. Um, it is just basically, you take the um, cocoa powder and then you just dip the, the ball and the cocoa powder not in chocolate first and you get that classic chocolate ball. So that's a classic chocolate truffle. So the second type, and the type that I'm sure a lot of you are really excited about doing. Um, Amy, what, what do you want your truffle coated in? Okay. I gotta, I gotta treat my volunteers. Sorry, you didn't get a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I did already, but uh, Romero and Amy, um, they're, uh, they're two big helpers of Yeti chocolates. They help me a lot. So, And they're going to be the ones that are at one of the three stations tonight. So. And if you ever made chocolates at any point, I'm happy to lend my expertise as someone who tastes really good chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> chocolates no charge. No charge. <laughs> All right, so with hand dipping, and this is literally what I do when I hand dip uh, truffle balls, is I basically just take it, put it in the chocolate, roll it around in my fingers, 
And then you want it just a real thin layer. You don't want it, you don't have to have it tempered um, because you're coating it in something, so it doesn't matter. So then drop it in, roll it around. And then take it with your unchocolated hand and put it on, and that's it. Real easy peasy lemon squeezy. <laughs> so that is what you guys get to do. <clears throat> All right, so the question is, how did I form the ball? Um, you know, that was the one thing I did not, I should have thought of, but uh, so um, basically, uh, let me get another glove. I'll just reform one. So you have a, basically a mass of chocolate like that. That's basically what it'll look like when you break it apart. Um, so then you take it and you just roll it between your hands and then it becomes a nice little ball. Is that from the tray that you... Uh, so the question is, is that from the ganache? Yes, so once the ganache is set, um, you basically take it and um, I scale it. So I do, I basically just rip off a chunk um, seven grams, because um, I do everything. I gave the measurements in ounces because that's what most people are familiar with, but I actually do everything in grams because you can get things in smaller quantities, which is very important for me. So um, I do seven grams and I scale every single one. And then once I scale it, roll it out and then put it on the tray. And then once I get them all scaled out, then I'll get my chocolate ready and then I'll just dip. Question is, would a melon baller work? Um, yeah, for, for your guys' purposes, totally. Um, a little ice cream scoop. Um, I will say this ganache is particularly firm, um, which if you wanted something a little bit softer, see, I'm ba you know, like I said, I'm giving you just the basic, um, if you wanted it a little softer, you could just add a little more cream um, versus chocolate to get it a little more softer consistency and then yeah, you could totally. Um, you can also, a lot of, um, with this one in particular because it is so firm, you could actually pipe it out um, and then once it firmed up, roll it. So, any more questions before we, uh, ooh, Katya. Okay, so um, I did, so that is a really good question. Um, do I use this to make what I make? Yes and no. Um, so I do variations. I do more complicated variations, formulas of this basic ganache to make those truffles over there. I also use, which I brought one with me, I use a lot of molds. So this is a polycarbonate mold. Um, that you would then take tempered chocolate, pour it in, um, put, scrape it off, and then you flip it over and you dump out the excess and it creates a shell that then you fill with the ganache. Obviously you need a little softer ganache to do that, but, um, and then you wanna leave a little bit of a gap because then you um, take more tempered chocolate after it sets and you put it over the top and it creates the bottom um, and then chocolate contracts as it cools. So if your chocolate is in temper, it will contract from the mold and then you can just flip it over and if you did it right, they all just pop out. So that's, um, and then, um, you know, this is just basic stuff, but getting into more advanced techniques, I use colored cocoa butter to um, paint inside the molds. Um, I use some luster dust, edible luster dust and then um, chocolate cocoa butter transfer sheets. So it's basically a design that's printed in cocoa butter that then I cut into squares and um, I do slabs of ganache. So it's basically a big ganache in a frame that I cut into squares and then hand dip. Um, and I use 
uh, different method than what I showed you today. It's basically a fork and I dip it and then when the chocolate is still wet, you put it on top and as it cools, it contracts, transfers the design over. Yes? Um, how do you get the pretty like, designs, like marble designs on the top? So the question is, how do I get the pretty marble designs on the top? So um, my fig jam chocolate, it might be this, the one that she's referring to, um, it's in a dome mold and so I basically, um, it's like finger painting. So I basically take um, two different types of color cocoa butter and I start with one and I swish it inside the mold and then I take the other and swish it at the same time so it creates that marbled effect. Yes. So do you have um, one or two particular suppliers you're going to for your chocolate making supplies? Um, so the question is uh, do I have a particular supplier to get my chocolate supplies? So I use a company for my chocolate sourcing called Baker c and C. it's out of Murray, Utah. Um, I also use a Canadian company called Chocolat Chocolat, it's based out of Montreal, Quebec. Um, As hobbyists, would we be able to buy from them or is that more commercial? Um, the question is for sourcing, um, as hobbyists, would you be able to buy from them? For Baker c and C? actually from both of them. Okay. I mean, you don't have to be um, pretty much anybody that I source with because I was doing I was, so I guess a little backstory. I've been making chocolates for about 12 years now um, and I was not an official business for, well, 11 of those. So, okay. <laughs> so um, you can definitely get a lot of um, products online. Uh, Bakedeco.com is another really good, um, that's where you can get a lot of molds and hand dipping tools and that sort of stuff. So. And if anybody wants some more sourcing, um, just let you can come up and talk to me afterwards. Pibus University, where learning is a lifelong adventure. Is your vehicle in need of a quick oil change or tune-up before hitting the road this summer? Stop by Quick Lube and Tune, the home of the good guys at 610 South Wenatchee Avenue. Pibus University, where learning is a lifelong adventure. Um, okay, so the question is, how did I get into this? Um, all right, so uh, I was, I, I always kind of had a, a knack for dabbling in chocolate. My mom was a big baker, and so um, she used to do Christmas cookies, and she would, you know, she just used the almond bark, but I always liked to play around with it when I was younger. And then I did go through culinary school, so I went to Western, well, it's not called that anymore, but Western Culinary Institute in Portland, Oregon um, in 05. And that's where I got the foundation of what I do now. But it was only, what I do now was only a week's worth of class. So after I worked in the restaurant industry for a short stint, I realized that I hated working restaurant hours. <laughs> and um, so I actually decided that chocolates was really what I wanted to get into. So um, for those that did not read the Wenatchee World story, I. I was a wildland firefighter before I started making chocolates, but I went back to it because of making chocolates, because it afforded me the winters off so that I could um, just play with chocolate. And so that's basically, I was a career wildland firefighter for like 10 years, um, hobbyist, chocolatier. And so basically what I learned um, in that last 10 years was all self-taught, just reading a lot of Online threads, um, I have Chocolate and Confections is uh, by Peter Gerling is a huge, it's, we basically in the industry call it the Chocolate Bible. Um, and so that is a lot of what I reference um, for a reference material book, but, um, and a lot of trial and error, you know, just a lot of experimentation. So that's basically kind of where I got. And so, um, yeah, so I was a career firefighter, part-time chocolatier. And then I worked two fire seasons back to back to get the finances. I found the space out in Rock Island and decided to flip flop. So now I'm a full time chocolatier and I do firefighting on the side in the summertime as a contractor. So that's kind of basically, in a nutshell, how I got here. What was the name of that book again? Um, the name of the book is Chocolate in Confections. And it's by Peter Grueling, which his last name is G-R-E-W-E-L-I-N-G. 
And they, he actually also did a um, chocolate and confections at home. Um, the chocolate and confections is a little more for the advanced, but the, he also did a home-based one um, for hobbyists. So um, I, haven't, I haven't dabbled into it too much, but I hear it's really good. All right, any more questions? Um, you know, I was hoping to just do like three lines of 10, but I don't think that that's going to work very well. So maybe, um, just, uh, like one table at a time, maybe that these two can facilitate. And then while you guys are dipping, I can continue to answer questions if that works for you guys. Cause I won't. Um, so the question was um, the different types of things that you can roll chocolate in. Oh yeah, um, that was something that I had written down there. Yes, so there's lots of different things that you can roll your chocolates in. Uh, a few things, um, nuts are a big one, um, ground. Um, you, yeah, you chop them pretty good. Um, I have, like the pecans I have here, are a little rougher chopped, and then the hazelnut and the pistachios is a little finer. Um, I have some toasted coconut. Um, I have some um, basically fairly ground up toffee bits. Um, you could do just plain powdered sugar. Um, I have some strawberry freeze dried powder that I mix with a little powdered sugar. Um, that one is like the cocoa powder. You don't need to dip it in chocolate first. Um, I wasn't sure how many young kids we were going to have, so just in case, I brought some just fun sprinkles, um, too. Um, cookie bits, I brought some crushed up Oreos. So, I mean, the, um, the possibilities are really, it's kind of, you know, use your imagination um, as to what you really want to throw on there um, to dip you know, to coat the chocolate in. The sky's kind of, kind of the limit. Um, you could use, you could even use like, take old, you know, cake. You could um, take crumble up cake, dry it out, and coat it with little dried cake bits too. Question. Uh, the question is, what's my favorite of the coatings? Just a truffle in general. What is my favorite truffle? That's a really hard question. Um, of the truffles, uh, of the truffles that I make, I would say right now um, is probably my fig jam chocolate. So I make uh, fig jam from scratch, and then I make a fig balsamic, which I use the balsamic from D Olivo. Um, and so yeah, it's a fig, um, fig jam and fig balsamic truffle, and. Um, it's pretty darn good. I also make a lime truffle. That's really good. But that's another thing. Um, for those that aren't too familiar with my chocolates, I do my chocolates seasonally. Um, so I do them in uh, season, fall, basically collections. So spring, summer, fall, and winter. So every three months they rotate for the dairy full line, as I like to call it. The dairy free line is another line that I offer, and it is static, although I'm hoping to switch out a couple here pretty soon. Um, although the peanut butter cups are pretty popular, so I don't think that I'd be able to let those go <laughs> anytime soon. And then I have three chocolates that I make year round. Um, I have a Smith & Wesson, which is a white chocolate Kahlua milk chocolate espresso. Um, it looks like a bullet, actually, when you look at it. Um, I have, and then I have a milk and dark salted caramel. Um, and those are also pretty good. I do love caramel, so. <laughs> All right. My favorite is the dark salted caramel. That's what I would answer today. No peanut butter cup? You switched? I mean, I, I consider it a truffle. It's a peanut butter cup. Oh, okay. All right. Using the truffle definition. <laughs> All right, so. Um, so currently, the only place that I sell my dairy-free chocolates, unless you get it from me personally, is I sell right now just uh, the almond sea salt 
and ginger bar and the peanut butter cups out at Lisa B's. Otherwise, nobody else in town um, besides me <laughs> wants to sell my <laughs> dairy-free chocolates. But um, I'm at Pibus every other, uh, well, I'm there basically every week. It's either Fridays or Saturdays. And you can always order online um, and you can do a local pickup. You can either pick up at um, the bookshop in town on Palouse Street or um, Sherry at Balsam Root has been generous enough to have me deliver, let me do local pickups there as well. Um, or you can catch me at Pibus. But you can do custom orders online. That's the tricky part. I can't do custom orders in person for the most part, but you can always order custom online and then um, you can do local pickup and it's free. So. Pibus University, where learning is a lifelong adventure. Get the fastest internet available in North Central Washington by switching to Localtel and get speeds up to 1,000 meg. Call 888-8888 today or go online to localtel.net. Pibus University, where learning is a lifelong adventure. So which one do you do? So remember, if yep, you so. want to do what? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you just drop it in there and then just grab it, roll it around. Yep. Yep. And then you want to drag your hand. Yep, there you go. And then just plop it in there. And then you'll just roll her around. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. And then throw it on your plate. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the question was, um, if, I, if you wanted to do a peanut butter filling, could you just use peanut butter out of the jar? Totally. Um, um, so you'd mix it with powdered sugar? Powdered sugar. Yep. And so for me, I actually, I got um, a melanger. It's basically a, a grinder, a stone grinder. And so I make my own peanut butter now to make my peanut butter cups. But yeah, it's um, so I would do powdered sugar, peanut butter, and then a little salt and a little vanilla. Can you use uh, different liquids in there? I meant to mention that, but yeah, you can uh, you can add a little you can get a little boozy if you want to, and add a little uh, brandy um, or chambord. I make a nice sham raspberry chambord truffle for. Valentine's Day. Do you need a? I, I was gonna go oh, for okay. Coffee next. Yeah, perfect. Um, so yeah, you would basically substitute. Um, I generally try to do. I don't go over ten percent of liquor in my chocolate truffle so up to 10 percent but don't you still have to have the cream too or is it yes so you take 10 percent of the cream out and put yep the yeah liquid. yeah so you just you just liquid for liquid. yes so if you want to substitute um a few a fruit puree or a juice or like lemon or lime um you basically substitute a certain percentage of the cream for the lime juice or liquor. Chocolate stays, stays static and it's, yes. your flavorings are coming out with liquid side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like that only with coconut Only milk? with coconut milk, yes. So you basically do the same thing, you just use coconut milk in lieu of cream. Um, so I use the Simple Truth Organic coconut milk that you get at Kroger. So it's not in the Asian section, it's actually in the baking section. Um, and it's like up on the top shelf, but I use that because it actually has the least amount of ingredients of all of them and that's In place of cream? In place of cream, yes. So that's what I use for my dairy-free chocolates
For all the latest news in North Central Washington, go to ncwlife.com or find us on Facebook. Got a news tip? Email us at news at ncwlife.com or call 888-2020.